Like many other metro and urban transport systems across the United Kingdom, the London Tramlink is a light rail network running in many places on heavy rail foundations. Among them was a little line running through the outer suburbs of South London. Unloved and ignored in its heyday, and eventually closed with little to no fanfare. And yet, not only does a large part of this route still live on to this day, but the rest hides a wealth of stunning secrets hidden almost in plain sight. The kind that will take your breath away when you find them. So let's take you on that quest to find the trail of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway. Hello people of the internet, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another station in another mile. It's a rather pleasant, sunny September day. It's like spring has returned very briefly and on a sunny day like this, what do you think someone like me would be getting up to? One of my favourite things, exploring abandoned railways and I like to think I've got quite a juicy one for you today. I'm on the London tram link today, which is for the most part, along with some new build sections, made up of already existing National Rail, British Rail lines. I've just come from Birkbeck, which is just up there, which is what used to be a full National Rail double track line, converted so that National Rail now uses just one track and the trams use the other one. That's an example of the tram link using already existing lines. But what about the tram link using lines long gone? Lines that in some cases you'd be hard pressed to ever realize ever existed. Well, for that, we're gonna have to head down the road to Elmer's End Station, the true start of today's quest to find the good old Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway. Now, in the words of Aerosmith, let's walk this way. Okay, that's better. I am now at Elmer's End Station itself, and you can tell that I'm on the station because I'm wearing my mask. And this was once the northern terminus, the northern end of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway. It wasn't just any old railway, it was a joint railway. Although the line itself was never really that exciting or busy in its prime, and closed in 1983, you'd be surprised by just how much you can still see and how much of the old alignment you can still explore today. And I'm not just talking about the section, about two thirds or so of it, that have been reused by London Tramlink, including this bit here, which is now a bay platform for a tram stop here at Elmer's End Station. But even the part that was never reused, even the bit that was just left to rot, it hasn't rotted away. There's still so much to explore. But before we explore the route proper, I should probably give you a brief history lesson and a nice little rundown of the route of the Woodside and South Croydon Railway that we're gonna be exploring today. Do you know what would be really useful to explain all of that? A whiteboard. Well, wouldn't you know, that's exactly what we have. So the origin of the Woodside and South Croydon Railway actually starts with another line altogether. A branch from the South Eastern Railway, they of Bromley North fame, and their station at New Beckenham down to Addiscombe, or Croydon as it was originally known, with intermediate stops at Elmer's End and Woodside. Built in 1864, this line was intended to continue onwards to Redhill, but the nearby London, Brighton and South Coast Railway interjected. 20 years later, both companies would come together to build two new lines in the area. Firstly, the Oxted Line, which branched off the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway's Brighton Main Line at South Croydon and ran south to Hurst Green, where three separate branches split off. And secondly, a line branching off from the South Eastern Railway's Addiscombe Line, just past Woodside Station, running southwest to connect with the Oxted Line at a new Selsden station. 
The latter actually started construction before the former, but the Oxted line was actually completed first in 1884, with the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway opening in 1885 after weather disrupted construction. And right from the outset, the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway seemed fairly unloved and struggled to find its place. A first proposal for closure came in 1895, just 10 years after it opened. And despite adding rail motors in 1905 and opening new halts at Bingham Road and Spencer Road in 1906, the line was first closed in 1917 during the First World War. However, post-war, the new Southern Railway revamped the line with third rail electric running, rebuilt several stations to better Stanwood, and reopened the line altogether in 1935. This still didn't seem to turn around the fortunes of the line, and from there, services were gradually reduced down the years. Amazingly, it did survive the beaching cuts, and a threat to closure in 1963 was fought off by a pressure group of local residents. 20 years later, however, the line would finally close in May 1983. The Addiscombe branch would survive a little longer, only closing in 1997, by which point the London Tramlink was well underway to being built. This paved the way for both of these old lines to be integrated into the new network, opening May 2000, exactly 17 years after the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway closed. The trams now use the old alignment from Elmer's End as far as the old Coombe Road station, with the new branch turning east to head towards New Addington. And that's where we are today, a lot of the old now being used by the new, and a surprising amount left of what wasn't reused, if you know where to look. Starting at Elmer's End means we're initially following the alignment that is now used by the trams. Our first stop at Arena was never a station back in the old days, but our second stop at Woodside most definitely was. And there's a lot to explore here. Okay, so we're at the first stop southbound, which is Woodside. You know, the whole Woodside part of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway, you see? And what's interesting about this station in particular is although the tram stop is a little bit further down the tracks that way, the original station is, well, this is it. The original station buildings are all still here and still intact. And the main station building itself is very elegant, very, it has a, it has a presence to it, which is very nice. And at the moment it doesn't really seem to be being used for much. I hope it can find some use at some point. It looks like it may have been a taxi rank at some point since closure. But what's also very interesting are the facilities of which you can get down from the station up here at road level down to the platforms. There's steps on either side. The original ones over on that side are bricked up and long overgrown. And even more fascinatingly, is that a word? We're going to roll with it. Over on the other side is a flat ramp down to the platforms. Now it'd be easy to think, well, that's a more modern uh, addition to the station for accessibility reasons, you know, wheelchair, flat ramp for access to platforms. No, that's actually an original feature. There was actually a horse racing track near here, the Croydon Racecourse. The train, at the time, was a fantastic way of getting one's horses to the racecourse. The except that the racecourse closed less than 20 years after the line opened, rendering that whole flat ramp to get your horses down to uh, track level they're kind of redundant, except then it wasn't redundant because now it's an excellent way for access. It's an excellent accessibility option for passengers with accessibility requirements to get from road level down to the platform. And that is a classic example of why sometimes features built by the railways and railway stations and things like that that may seem like they don't have a use anymore. You never know what use they could have in the future. Meantime, let's continue our journey southbound, shall we? The next stretch contains plenty to look out for. The tram stop at Black Horse Lane is another new stop built when the trams arrived, but it's here that the Woodside and South Croydon officially branched off from the Addiscombe line, of which we'll be looking at in closer detail in a separate video. For now though, let's continue southbound to the next stop at Addiscombe, where tracks that used to run high above ground through Bingham Road Station now run at street level through the new tram stop. Next up is a triangle junction near Sandilands tram stop on an alignment that was very obviously used to run straight through and three separate tunnels before we reach the former Coombe Road station site and the point where old rails and new trams diverge. Okay, so I've just got off the tram at Lloyd Park and I'm stood in a very important spot for two reasons. Number one, this roughly is the site of the old Coombe Road station, which 
I mean, there's really nothing left to see of it. And secondly, for our purposes today, this is where old and new diverge. So as you can see behind me, as a tram is heading towards New Addington, the line curves round the corner and heads eastbound, except that's where the current tram link line goes. But that's not where the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway went. It kept going that way. Put it this way, the first time I realised just how much was left extant and surviving of this unused section of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway, I was pretty stunned. Come over here, I'll show you what I mean. From the point where the tram line turns east, we instead continued southbound down Campton Road before turning right into Spencer Road and in the process discovering just how much of the old railway is still in situ. The first alleyway we encounter on our right features a footbridge over the old railway cutting which in itself is fascinating. But if you thought that was amazing, just wait until we get to the second alleyway. Okay, so I'm in an alleyway just off Spencer Road. What's really that appealing about that, you may ask? Well, on the face of it, not much, but that was the road called Spencer Road. I'm not going to edit this because I want to show you what's lying barely 30 seconds off the beaten track. It's not very often you get to discover an entire abandoned station this close to civilization. Except this one. <laughs> Welcome to Spencer Road Halt. Yes, folks, welcome to Spencer Road Halt, potentially my single favourite part of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway, simply because I can't quite believe that this still exists. Take a guess when Spencer Road Halt was closed. No, not 1983 with the rest of the line. A little bit earlier than that. 1915. Where I'm standing right now has been closed to passengers for 100 and five years. And yet, I'm stood on the footbridge, which has actually had a lick of paint fairly recently, even about 10 or 15 years ago, you find pictures of this site, and this bridge is all rusting away, as you'd expect from a bridge that's over 100 years old, but it's had a lick of paint. Someone, someone is clearly looking after the structure, and the tracks are still there. That's what blows me away the most. The tracks are all still there. The original wooden sleepers, the rails, they're all there. They're all extant. And it's not just my imagination. There even seems to be a clearing with less stuff growing in it. It's like this is deliberately being maintained as a sort of little shrine to what used to be here. Sure, the original buildings are long gone. Obviously they were gone soon after the closure of the station in 1915 itself. But considering where it is, considering how long not just the line, but this station in particular has been closed, I can't quite believe that this is still here. But I'm really glad that it is. <laughs> There's so much here that you can almost imagine everything else that was once here. The little buildings, the line itself, the trains. Even after the station would have been shut, this footbridge would have still been open. And the line itself, especially in later years, would have been used for freight and a local oil storage facility. So there would have still been trains running down this bit of track. So you could still walk across this footbridge and imagine freight trains coming through here and all in this hidden corner of South London. Pardon me for rambling. Some people say I ramble a bit too much in these videos, but Sometimes I just get caught up in the, the joy of it all. Being here, being here and sharing this with you all, it's kind of special, I'm not gonna lie. But, most importantly, this isn't even the main event of this video. We've still got a few more stops southbound to go, so let's get cracking. In a city where so much is built over and swept away the moment it's closed, it is truly staggering how almost the entire rest of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway is still extant. From Spencer Road Holt, the line continues over the also still intact Crime Road Bridge and under yet another footbridge, leading us right to our final destination on this adventure, the site and what remains of Selsden Station. All right, folks, this is it. The last stop on our journey today. This is Selsden Station, or at least it was until it closed along with the rest of the line in May, 1983. And in fact, it closed holding the curious distinction 
of being the last gas lit station in all of London. So there you go. Over to my left is the Oxted Line, which is still very much active to this day. In fact, if you head southbound, you can visit our old friends, the Spa Valley Railway at Eridge Station. There's platforms extant still on the Oxted Line. And as for the Woodside platforms over here, well, kind of like Spencer Road Holt, there's a tantalizingly large amount of stuff that survives here, including tracks, they're still down, platform faces on both sides, although a lot of the station buildings were wiped away in the 1960s, and now the site of them is, uh, I believe, a builder's uh, yard of some description. You can clearly see some steps across the platforms. There is even a subway extant around here. It's like Spencer Road Holt. It's fascinating how it's so close. You can basically reach out and touch it. It does feel kind of tantalizing. It feels like it's still here waiting for a good enough use. There have been a few proposals to reopen this last section of the Woodside in South Croydon. And looking at it, it almost feels like, I don't know, it feels like a heritage railway that hasn't been restored yet. Can you imagine that? This would be the most inner London heritage railway ever, I think. The only one close would be the Epping Onga Railway. Otherwise, for now, it just remains this fascinating snapshot in time. And just like Spencer Road, especially here at Selsden, there's enough here so that you can really paint a picture in your mind of how this thing looked. It's not a case of trying to imagine it using photographs placed in front of a scene that looks nothing like what it once was. This is literally it, frozen in time, waiting for a purpose again. And you never know, if so much of the route did find a purpose with Tramlink, maybe there's a very good reason why this is all still extant. And quite frankly, there are and have been enough examples of lines completely wiped off the map and erased from history, so much so that we're getting to the point now where we're realizing eh, we kind of need those lines back again. We could really do with the capacity again. Ah, we can't put them back because we've kind of wiped them away so completely. So it is heartening that so much is still here. So much of the track bed is still here and seemingly ready to go. And it seems like it wouldn't take much to get this section running again. But for what reason? And I guess that's for someone else to answer in another video in another day. For now, this is where our exploration, our adventure of the Woodside and South Croydon Joint Railway ends as a train is going past. There you go, look at that. There's a train arriving in the Oxted platforms of Selston Station. Well, if this was 1981, it would have been anyway. It is still slowing down for a signal though, so it does look like it's stopping at the old platforms. That's brilliant. I've done a lot of walking today, but hopefully it's all been worthwhile. And I really hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up. Consider supporting me on platforms like Patreon. And until we meet again, folks, I will see you guys soon along the way.